All right, this is uh, week four, uh, lecture two on missional leadership. Uh, in the last lecture, we ended by talking about that in the modern world, there was a sense of that the world was mechanistic, right? It was mechanical. It was designed that way. There was a sense of natural law and order that if I could understand the pieces that made up the whole and I could drill down and find out how those pieces operated to affect the whole, then I could control, manipulate, and predict outcomes, and that all you had to have was the right leader at the right spot at the right time in order to get the kind of success that you needed. However, in in when the modern world began to, to shift and give give way to what's called post-modernity, some of the mechanistic worldview idea was called into question uh, because in in sort of Newtonian physics, there is that sense that the world is is shaped by a sense of law and order. But when you introduce things like like quantum physics, um, you, you get a whole new different kind of worldview where, where things aren't as predictable as we once thought and prog progress and success aren't as predictable um, and clear as we once uh, assumed or, or or thought they might be, and so what we have is 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 the advent of of things like chaos theory, where where all of a sudden things don't operate the way they once did, and and sometimes you can have all of the right pieces in all of the right places, you can have the right leader in the right spot, and they can do all of those things that once were told that if you did these things, these are the outcomes, this is the success which you get, and you still don't get it uh, because maybe the context is different, or maybe there's there's pieces. At work uh, within the life of the organization that 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 maybe don't facilitate that predictability, and so postmodernity calls into question the assumptions of this sort of mechanistic way of the world uh, that the world is more organic than that. The, the world is 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 not just um, the sum of its lowest parts. That that these parts work on each other, and that there is a sense of chaos that 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 complexity right that that emerges out of this, and so. In, in the advent of this new paradigm of post-modernity, there was a re-envisioning of leadership. You might find it interesting that in a, in, a, in a week on which we're talking about missional leadership, I had you read the book, The Starfish and the Spider. Uh, a business book, right? Um, that, but there's a reason for that because there is a re-envisioning happening across the spectrum from business to organizations to churches to rethink how do we lead in a new complex and chaotic environment where the world is no longer shaped by the mechanisms and the natural laws that we once assumed in modernity, okay? So that's really the question. How then do we lead um, now that the world is not as a set, stable, and predictable as we once thought, and then how do we measure success? And what it is, what is, what it is required is a re envisioning of leadership, um, a leadership that is less hierarchical, less top down, more collaborative. Sure, you may have a senior leader, but that senior leader doesn't exist as as sort of the harbinger of all truth and all knowledge and all wisdom and all intelligence. That senior leadership is in is in a sense the one who sort of helps helps move an organization, helps helps move a church, help, helps move a business in a direction collaboratively in which you're calling upon or drawing upon the the native genius, and that's a term that Liz Wiseman uses in the book Multipliers, the native genius of your of your organization because within the parts of the organization, within the, the quote unquote lower level management or lower level teams, you have this native genius. You have these abilities and gifts within your organization themselves, a perspective, a way of seeing the world, ideas that need to be valued because in a world of complexity, one person sitting at the top cannot control or predict outcomes. It requires the team to enmesh in itself in a commonly shared vision and mission and that collaborative trust, that collaborative way of being together in which, and which power and authority is not measured by position and title, but power and authority is measured by influence, by relationship, by empowerment, and by this cohesive vision that drives an organization forward. In in the old way of doing church, you had a senior leader who set the mission and the vision, disseminated it down to the staff and to the other leadership, and then they were supposed to jump on board and follow that way forward. And it was centripetally, centripetally designed. Um, 
and and everything sort of the buck stopped with the leader. In this new world, in this world of complexity and chaos, that senior leader, especially within the church, who steps out of that centripetal model and into the centrifugal model, recognizes that I'm stepping out into this world and I don't have all the answers and I don't I can't make all of this happen on my own. So I have to draw from the giftings, the graces. I have to be kind of become the kind of leader who is secure enough in myself and in my leadership capacity to empower and invite others to think well with me about the kind of vision that God has for us together, right? So so it's a very it's very much an empowerment model and it draws upon the 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 natural giftings of the group. See, so we've been talking about there's a couple assumptions that this this form of of leadership uh, makes. First off is the assumption of Ephesians 2:10, right? For 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 you are God's workmanship created and prepared in Christ Jesus to do the good works that God has prepared in advance for you to do. There's this sense that the belief is within this form of leadership that every person that has a part of the organization, that is a part of the congregation, that is a part of the church, is naturally the workmanship of God. That like they have a role. Like God has gifted them to have to have a role within the life of the church. And the senior leader is not the one to determine or to dictate what that role should be or what the actions prescriptively should be. The senior leader is the one who then uh breathes life into those who are the workmanship of God and 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 begins to liberate them and set them free from some of the binds and the ceilings that they've experienced in the past in order to elevate their capacity to contribute their unique contribution into the life and the mission of God. Like that's that's what the senior leader does, which means we have to then move to Ephesians 4 where it says that God gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, teachers, and, and, uh, and, and uh, pastors. Or shepherds, uh, what's called a pest, uh, that God has has prepared that for the church, so that they are equipped. The church is then equipped. Those those leaders then become not the doers of the ministry, and not the ones who who prescribe everything within the life of the ministry that needs to be taking place. But they're the ones who then equip the saints for their good work. They prepare the workmanship for the works that have been created in advance to do. There's there's a significant shift that takes place within the life of the leader themselves, where no longer do I sit on top, no longer is my position or my positional authority my bread and butter. That's not where I'm I'm hanging my hat. That's not what determines my actions and my the way in which I engage this world. This is, my, my position is not an arrival. My position is a responsibility to cultivate within the life of the church and the organization all that is called to uh, for us to participate in collaboratively as the mission of God. And then you're dispatching people who now feel empowered and equipped to see themselves as leaders, as missional change agents, as ambassadors of reconciliation, so that they can go out into the world and fulfill God's purposes for their lives, for the church, for the mission of God, and not just some clear-cut prescribed mission and plan that has come down from the top. So there's a shift that's taking place, right? And so the starfish and the spider is, is to invite Invite us to think about what does it look like to live in an organization where we're no longer shaped by a top-down mentality, uh, but that something else takes place within the life of the church. And so we're going to talk, we're going to build upon that over the next couple uh, lectures as we move forward here.